testing a hypothesis about a population proportion. So we introduced proportions back when we talked about the central limit theorem and confidence intervals. Recall that proportions are for qualitative data. It's a way for us to be able to calculate probabilities or perform a hypothesis test on qualitative data. So one of my popular examples are M&Ms. Let's say that we were curious to find out what proportion of M&Ms ever created were red. So in order to do that, we would collect a sample, let's say of a thousand M&Ms, and we would then count the total red M&Ms out of the 1,000. And we would take that count, the part, and divide it by the total in order to get a proportion. Now we are going to be using proportions in order to test a hypothesis statement. So testing a hypothesis concerning a proportion is nearly identical to testing a hypothesis about a mean. They have the same exact processes. There are only a few differences. So one difference is that when you set up the hypothesis statements, the null and the alternative, the population parameter you will use is P for population proportion instead of mu that was used for population mean. The other change is that the standard error has a different formula, which you should be familiar with by now. And the test statistic that you use for proportions, there is no longer a choice um, because there is no standard deviation with proportions, so we will always use a Z. The setups are the same. You have a two-tailed setup, a right-tailed setup, and a left-tailed setup. Notice again that the population parameter written in the hypothesis statements are all P, the population parameter P, and P naught is the hypothesized proportion. So let's say that I believe that the proportion of red M&Ms is 33%, uh, then I would make P naught 0.33. Recall proportions are between zero and one, just like probabilities, you would never write the percent form here. The alternative hypothesis determines the test, so no direction indicated is two-tailed. This points to the right, so we got ourselves a right-tailed. And we have the less than sign, which points to the left, indicating a left-tailed test. As I've said several times, the setup of a hypothesis is extremely important to the results of the, ex the test. So your setup determines everything. So if your setup is wrong, your entire hypothesis test will not be very helpful. The data obtained is always gotta be from a random sample. We know this by now that that is a set assumption for anything that we wanna do in stats, really because if our data is not obtained from a randomly selected sample, then we are risking the fact that our data is not accurate and that it includes biases, which would not be good. Uh, the conditions from the central limit theorem need to be passed. Recall that n times p is greater than or equal to 10 and n times one minus p is also greater than or equal to 10. That that uh, central limit theorem requirement allows us to use the standard error for proportions formula, which is needed. So this formula is only valid if this criteria is met. Let's try an example. So a college is trying a new student registration system and would like to know if there is sufficient evidence to conclude that more than 60% of the students are in favor of this new system. In a random sample of 520 students, 352 said that the new registration system is superior. So let's run a hypothesis test testing the claim that more than 60% of students are in favor of the new system. So let's dissect this problem a little bit. So if we're looking at this, we see more than, which is our claim. And because it's a strictly more than, a strictly greater than, we know that that goes in the alternative hypothesis. So we write our setup. Again, we pick the population parameter that fits the problem. And since we look through here, I don't see the word mean anywhere. I don't see the word proportion. So it may be a little tricky for me to decide what population parameter I should be using. And I'll give you a little hint. 
If a problem does not state the standard deviation, it is not a means problem. Means problems need standard deviation in order to complete any kind of calculation. You may not be stated in a problem where a data set is given though, because you can calculate it yourself. So be careful with that. But here with no data set given, and nothing is mentioned about mean or standard deviation, then we are fairly safe to assume that this is a proportions problem. The last thing I want you to do is to look at the percent and assume that it's proportions because of the percent, because there are plenty of average problems, mean percentages, uh, and so therefore that would not be true. So you want to look for other things, and honestly, the biggest thing that stands out to, to me when I'm looking for a problem and deciding whether it's in the means or the proportions is whether standard deviation is mentioned. So now the claim is strictly more than, because there's no equal sign with that, that goes in the alternative, and you always use the proportion form, not the percent form. So I'm labeling my claim. And then I'll build the opposite. So technically the opposite is a less than or equal to 60%. But remember with these hypothesis tests, you can just put an equal sign every time in the null because the statistical test is designed to test that equal sign and not necessarily caring about the less than or equal term. Okay, so that's our setup. We know we have a right tailed test because our alternative is a greater than and it's an arrow pointing to the right. We specify the significance level. Since this problem did not give a significance level, this is a good time to remember that the default would be 0 0.05. We need to validate the assumptions, and we don't have to worry about identifying the appropriate statistic because Z is always going to be used for proportions. This data was collected from a random sample. The sample size was 520. If we multiply that by 0.6, we get 312 greater than 10, check. And n times 1 minus p is going to give us 208, which is also greater than 10. So now we are ready to run the hypothesis in our guru. So we come over here and we select analytics and analysis, proportion inference for one population. We don't have a data set, so we're going to have to fill everything in. We are talking about, let's go back to the original problem so we can see. We are talking about students. Okay, so this is for students. And the success would be in favor of the new system. Sample size is 520. The count out of 520 that were in favor of the new system was 352. We are not doing a confidence interval. We're going to do a hypothesis test. We had a greater than 60%. And we'll always choose this large sample Z because that's what we tested for with that central limit theorem requirement. And our significance level is the default. So here I can see that my P value is really, really, really small. And a very small P value is going to tell us to reject the null hypothesis. We can also see that with this test statistic here is 3.58. It needs to be compared to a critical value, which it doesn't look like our guru gives me that critical value, but I do have it in the PowerPoint. So here we go. The critical value is 1.645. And in order to get this, because our guru doesn't seem to be that great at giving critical values, I will contact them and see if I can get that changed. But for now, remember to get this critical value um, with the given information that we have, what we can do is find it by either using our calculators, our TI calculators, you can find critical values by doing an inverse norm, um, or you can look at the Z table um, so if you look up standard normal table, you'd be able to find that critical value as well um, by knowing the alpha level. So right now, p-value is plenty. It gives us the conclusion we need. And our conclusion being that we will reject the null hypothesis. And then we will conclude for the claim, since we've rejected the null, which means that the alternative is a Thumbs up if we don't like the null, 
Then there is overwhelming evidence that over 60% of students prefer the new system with a significance level of 0 0.05. Let's try another one. So in the city of Savannah, want the well, I should say the city of Savannah wants to know if its citizens are in favor of building a toll bridge across the river. A research company was hired to survey a sample of local residents to determine their views on the construction of the toll bridge. The mayor would like to know if the majority of the city, the residents are in favor of this bridge before really committing to this. They want to set the alpha level at 0 0.01. And then they collected a random sample of 420 residents and determined that 228 were in favor of the new bridge. Okay. So majority, now to set our null and all alternative hypothesis, we need to understand the word majority. So if you looked up the word majority, because let's say you're like, mm, I don't know what that means, you would find that it is more than 50%. Not 50%, that's not a majority, that's exactly half. But if you have more than 50%, for example, the election, if a presidential candidate had more than 50% of the votes, then they should win the election. Determine the null and the alternative hypothesis. So because we are trying to test whether we have more than the majority, or we have the majority rather, of residents in favor, our claim is the alternative hypothesis with the population proportion being more than 50%. The null is the complement. So technically this could be a less than or equal to, but an equal to is fine for the test. Got to check our assumptions. We do have a random sample and we check 420 times 0 0.5, these are actually equivalent calculations because 0 0.5 and 1 minus 0 0.5 is still 0.5. So it comes out to 210, which is greater than 10. So our assumptions pass. Now we're ready to run the test. I'm just gonna put this in front of us. So we have all the data we need. So in our GUI, we go to analytics, we go to analysis, and we select population inference for one population. Um, our factor, our citizens, and our success label in favor of bridge. So our sample size is 420. The amount out of 420 that said yes, we're in favor was 228. We're trying to get the majority, so greater than 50% proportion 0.5. Always use your large sample Z. Significance level is set at 0.01. So here we see that we have a p-value of 0 0.0395, if I round. Okay, so 0 0.04 is larger than this 0 0.01 alpha level. So here we see we have a critical value of 2.33. The test statistic is less than that, resulting in failing to reject the null hypothesis. Our p-value being greater than 0 0.01 also tells us to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, fail to reject, excuse me, sorry, totally said that backwards. This is our fail to reject zone and our 1.76 is in the fail to reject zone. And our larger p-value gives us a fail to reject the null. So again, if we're failing to reject the fact that the proportion is 50%, then we are stating that we do not believe the majority of our residents are in favor of this bridge. And there, ha there you have it. That is hypothesis testing for proportions.